Definitely. Picture is on the map. Ah, yes, sir. And you can oh, hear us also. Okay, good. Oh, I start us. Right. Good afternoon, all of you. Today we discuss about uh, the benign and malignant lesions of the larynx, which is an interesting topic, for the, but both for the ENT section and also for the undergraduate uh, learning program because you have to identify the early lesions. They come with the uh, I hope uh, to get a normal feel in the larynx. Well, I will. I, I would like to show you one video where you are seeing a neurofibroma of the vocal cord. Neurofibroma of the vocal cord, and this uh, neurofibroma. Hope you are seeing this neurofibroma is moving up and down uh, and uh, it has a pedunculated and also a fixed mass. Both sides here. There is another uh, video where what I would like to show you. Here we did uh, a total laryngectomy in our hospital, and this person now is using the esophageal speech. It is an audible speech where uh, you can understand. Uh, uh, what he wants to speak, speak about. The patient developed the use of universities in this patient. See, the benign tumors, uh, we are having a non neoplastic solid tumors like vocal latitudes, which we discussed in previous vocal poly, rinky sedima, and an ulcer with a polyps, and uh, another solid masses are intubation granuloma, leukoplakia, amylar tumors in the larynx. The next one are uh, chondroma arises from the cartilages, hemangioma, granular cell tumor, the thing which I have shown you the video in the neurofibroma, rhabdomyoma because it is have a muscle there, lipoma only, fibroma or lymphangioma. Coming to the malignant tumors, there are different varieties. The most common one is the mammal cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Carcinocarcinoma is another type variety pathology. Small cell carcinoma and because there is a cartilage, chondrosarcoma can also occur here. You all know a split epiglot is fastly we go, vocal nodules, which is also a benign mass lesion. Vocal polyp, winky sedima, which we have discussed. Here you are seeing a vocal cyst. There you are finding a fluid. You can see detailedly with the video endoscopes the fluid inside the cyst here. See, coming to the intracordial cyst, there are two types mucus retention cysts. They arise from the 
duct of the mucous gland which is plugged and uh, the glandular secretions are increased form into a cyst there these cysts are lined by cuboidal or low columnar epithelium there is other type of thing uh, which arises due to congenital origin is called epidermal inclusion cyst which will have a keratin inside and uh, a nest of epithelial cells they arise from congenitally where there is a remnants are left sub epithelially in the congenital level healing of the mucosa is injured by the voice abuse and this long standing mucus retention cysts may rupture spontaneously and they open into cyst another cyst or sometimes a glottic sulcus you are seeing different types of the vocal cord cyst see there is a cyst inside and uh, there is another small cyst which you have to carefully examine and uh, identify diagnose this type of cyst these all things are improved after the advent of the stroboscopy <coughs> the treatment is done by voice therapy surgery is indicated when there is a big cyst <coughs> the complete sharp dissection of the cyst is done mucus retention cysts are removed by either instruments or laser epidermal cyst which we we are discussed they are removed by the lateral microflap dissection technique where you take a mini flap giving a medial incision and uh, reflecting that uh, flap and uh, replace later the latter and you can put the fibrin glue for their attachment you can use uh, what the technique is called laser welding microspot technique here what they they shoot uh, with the laser the cyst will rupture then they will make it like a marsupialization and the epithelium is uh, covered uh, continuous with the cyst wall here you are seeing uh, a sacular cyst here you see when it is contract it is seen like this and uh, it and uh, abducted position taking a deep inspiration the sacular cyst appears like this there is another cyst uh, what you call uh, ventricular cyst this is uh, sorry this is another sacular cyst where you are seeing during the phonation sometimes in the phonation it will disappear into the depth of the ventricle and you may not identify this is another ventricular cyst arising from the ventricle and it is almost obscuring the vision of the vocal cord in this patient here is the sulcus vocalis this is another condition where you find sulcus that means the vocal cord will have a smooth or sometimes irregular sulcus one or two may be there it may be unilateral or sometimes it may be seen as a bilateral as you are seeing here two picture sulcus vocalis arises due to invasion of the mucosa into varying depths of the vocal cord it is because of invasion of the mucosa if see sometimes the mucosa will rupture due to trauma or maybe hydrogenic or whatever voice trauma or some injuries this deep aspect of the sulci and cysts they rupture and there will be a formation of the tubed pedicle of the mucosa and this mucosal uh, this tubed pedicle mucosa appears like a mucosal bridge which will be will not be diagnosed early in case of indirect laryngoscopy there is another variety is called sulcus wedge tube this wedge tube it is a unilateral or bilateral this is adherence of the epithelium to the underlying ligament there may not be total sulcus a partially some area only is attached to the ligament this is a mostly a congenital failure of the development of the rinky space totally this causes uh, sulcus vertigo 
See, you are seeing here a sulcus, only unilateral sulcus here. And here, there is a edema of the vocal cord. By the same time, we are seeing here what you call sulcus vendition. Sulcus vocalis is the surgical technique how we we'll remove the part of the sulcus and we put the, both the edges together so that they will be epithelial. This is how you will see the mucosal bridge. You, are, you can able to see a mucosal bridge. This is all done by micro laryngeal technique with a high modification. This can be done here. Here you are seeing another case where there is a sulcus vegetative is present. Varying degrees of dysphonia is the clinical feature actually. Sometimes uh, the voice is uh, having a roughness and also breathing will be a little difficult. Sulcus vegetative, the voice is high pitched monotone and a weak breathy voice will be there. It is a very high pitched monotonic and a weak breathy voice is present in these patients. The treatment, you have to dissect the pocket of the ligament, both the edges of the sulcus, you have, you have to dissect it out and uh, you approximate the other edges. They will be this is done by micro laryngeal technique with the micro laryngeal instruments. Sulcus vegetative, it is nothing but a medialization position. That means you will take out the uh, uh, sulcus area and you have to medialize the vocal cord more onto the normal side. Next, coming to the commonly, it is most of uh, because of two reasons. One is uh, anesthesia, anesthesia, it will be in the hands of anesthetist, or sometimes a prolonged intubation. This uh, intubation granulomas, because of prolonged intubation or rough intubation, sometimes when you use uh, a large tube into a small glottic inlet, uh, this is also can result in intubation granuloma in these patients. Here, what particularly first, uh, you will see an ulcer in the mucosa, and this, this mucosa, when it, when it heals slowly, it forms into a granuloma because this will touch both the vocal cords, mostly at the edges of or at the ends of the vocal process of the arytenoid. That's why you see mostly at the junction of the anterior two thirds is the posterior one third of the vocal cord. Or sometimes you will see only in the posterior one third of the vocal cord. These patients will have a symptoms like, uh, by, I mean, hoarseness will be there first, and there will be a history of uh, anesthesia, general anesthesia was given, and the patient will have a dyspnea uh, because the granuloma, when they increase in size, because they are bilateral, they can obstruct the airway and produce the even the strider also. Whenever you see a very small granulomas, we advise them to go for a vocal rest. But when there are big, we have to remove either microlaryngeal or nowadays endoscopic removal of the granuloma we will perform. You are seeing, see these are two granulomas, intubation granuloma, bilateral one because of this post -op, I mean post-ventilated or ventilator he was kept for a long time. This is another case where you are seeing uh, at the, actually the process, uh, vocal process skip and the uh, tension of the anterior two thirds to the posterior one third. This is another case of intubation granuloma. This is another uh, entity where sometimes any trauma can occur because of foreign body. This is one case Actually, we have removed a foreign body from the larynx. Later, this patient has developed this type of a mass 
which we have thought something uh, like uh, what you call any cyst or any other intraductal lesions, but it has come diagnosis as a biogenic granuloma. This is conducted in our hospital. This is another thing where you will see the vaginal granuloma. See, you know, vaginal granuloma comes both in the uh, nose and it will may extend into the oral cavity of the hypopharynx. This is one condition where you will find very, very rare occurring in the larynx or heart level. <clears throat> this is a common condition where you will see leukoplakia. Leukoplakia, even though they are common in the oral cavity, but they may be present in the larynx also. If you see here, see this is a, a case of leukoplakia where you are seeing white patches at the edges of here. It is actually leukoplakia is a dangerous one. You have to observe the patient regularly. It is a pre malignant condition. These patients may turn at any time into carcinoma of the larynx. And it is mostly seen in the adults. And it involves the upper surface of the vocal cords mostly because the irritants they touch the upper surface. Hence, the upper surface of the vocal cords are involved most commonly in these patients. These patients actually many times at early stages, they will not have any symptoms. Once you they are complaining of they develop coarseness, then only they come to the doctor for the examination and you identify normally a leukoplakia which is coming most medial, that means medial edge of the vocal cord or sometimes the leukoplakia is such a big enough, it is obstructing the movement of the vocal cord, then only the patient will develop coarseness of the voice. See, the, these leukoplakias, after the invention of this microrelingial technique, either my microscope or with video endoscope, you can remove it, you can slowly, without injuring the mucosa much, and also the particularly vocal ligament, you have to remove the leukoplakia. These all voice are what we call phono surgery are very, very important those who depend on the voice, that is celebrities and the like what senior actors or TV actors and the other professional users like our doctors and also teachers. These, these things are very, very important. At one time, when you remove any mask and send for what you call pathology, then the report will come, it is a papilloma or something like a polyp. Patient used to feel happy, oh, I didn't have any malignancy, they, go, they used to go back at, at that time when we were the student. But now they are coming to you for the voice chain. Even you diagnose the safe thing you have removed, but they will ask you, sir, okay, you tell it is a safe thing, but what about my voice? Because I have come to you for the voice only. That's why the depth of the subject, we have to go more, and phono surgery is evolving as another super speciality in the ENT. This is a, appear like a white plague or a warty growth. Collection of the plagues appears like a warty growth on the card. And these patients will have a particular symptom like harshness. And already I told you we have to remove it. But one thing, once you remove, you have to send the, by that mass to the histopathological examination. Because as I told you, these can cause uh, sometimes uh, the pre-malignancy. That's why they may have developed into carcinomas. There is another one called the amyloid tumor. These amyloid tumors, you will see mostly in the men between the 50 to 70 years of age. That is, it is a senior age, 50 to 70. And this also sometimes appear like a adunculated masses or sometimes a smooth plaque like uniform swelling over the, I mean, in the, in the vicinity of the vocal cords. Diagnosis, uh, normally we put as a cyst uh, or some uh, fibromas or a lipoma, neurolipoma. But normally diagnosis comes, I mean, you can diagnosis only by histology. After getting the histological report, oh, I have removed this amyloid property, not a simple system. 
whatever whatever the treatment is nothing but endoscopic surgical microlaryngeal excision see this is one case of amylachoma see we are seeing a light yellowish one this tumor is there and uh, because of this tumor continues hitting on the opposite side here, there is a small elevation sessile polyp is developing here it's a case of uh, amyloidosis amyloid tumor here next is the you should know about the common thing which occurs in the children that is multiple juvenile laryngeal papillomatosis this is a very common question many times will come it's most common benign lesion in children what is what is the tumor common in children mean that our answer is multiple juvenile laryngeal papillomata how it comes what is the etiology it is a mostly you it is a viral you know human papilloma viruses 6 and 11 others is the etiological factors 70 to 80 percent is seen below the four years of the age they come below four years 70 to 80 percent but many times uh, we we have seen uh, cases uh, even above the four years age yes. because in olden days four years when they used to come the people used to do the tracheostomy and send the patient you come afterwards at the age of puberty it will subside but now doing uh, juvenile papilloma tracheostomy it is a uh, offensive and in some countries if you do tracheostomy for this condition you are you will be sued for the legal thing that's why what they will do they you have to remove and put the patient on ventilator once is okay you have to send it don't unnecessarily you have to do the tracheostomy then these uh, warty lesions uh, are multiple these are uh, the main causes at the time of uh, birth uh, if the mother is having in the uh, over the genitalia any warty projections warts uh, these can give this this is the etiological factor it involves uh, both the epi all the parts of the larynx and trachea epiglottis false vocal cord true vocal cord erythematous it may go into subglottis or even into the trachea that's why nowadays to do tracheostomy in this papilloma is a again is the legal they appear like a pedunculated sometimes or sometimes they are very sessile reddish multiple pink masses sometimes they appear when you see suddenly they appear like a cauliflower growth ah. then they are small they appear like a finger like projections of this epithelial tumors with a, having a central fibrovascular core they, they have a central fibrovascular core which will have a nutrition for that recurrence is very very common you see you are seeing a multiple polyps this is done in our hospital these patients will come with a complaint of hoarseness or sometimes they are diagnosed in the pediatrics like a asthma because of the bees later when they are becoming more they come to us with a stridor either may be inspiratory at the early stages or biphasic in the late stages it depends upon the where the uh, papilloma are there and uh, you have to take the x ray of the neck a lateral view with uh, flexible or rigid laryngoscopy you can diagnose the condition the excision the microlaryngeal excision at the same time or sometimes you will take a biopsy first then can you can go for a excision that is the decision of the surgeon seeing the patient it is normally it is these papilloma and they recur spontaneously at the puberty but uh, nowadays uh, we don't ask the patient to go up to puberty because there are so many stages he has to go for school and learning and all the things are Uh, that is mean, social factor and we won't wait for the puberty the treatment starts early stages 
some people they used to use podophyllin and the interferons also are there. there is they developed autogenous vaccine also some people they drive with antiviral drugs even uh, you are having some homeopathic uh, what do you call tuja something that drug also we used to use they have some role or that but now we are having so many antiviral drugs lot of study is going on that and uh, if they are you are not having any medical relief then we will go for micro electrical artery we will use those days and we used to remove the polyp i mean these uh, papillomatous growth but now after advent of the carbon dioxide and the ktr that means ktp lasers the total mode of treatment has changed you can remove all the polyps in the same sitting there is no need for tracheostomy that is the treatment now is going tracheostomy whenever you can't manage in the above procedures you have to resort for tracheostomy but it is normally it is not a pre malignant condition see there is one condition called adult papilloma this adult papilloma which we call squamous papilloma it is a less aggressive it is also due to human papilloma virus exposure these patient will have a single small less aggressive and these uh, doesn't recur commonly men around 40 to 50 years age are commonly affected and these papillomas are seen at the ch or anti recurrence of local cars recurrence is very less we have to diagnose or differentiate it uh, keeping in the mind there is one condition called varicose carcinoma which also appears like that early stages and treatment is by the excision this is one condition where we have removed it has come as a solitary papilloma here then next is the you should know about uh, because there are cartilage is there thyroid and uh, cricoid uh, you may get a chondroma also they arise from cricoid carotid may be seen sometimes in the subglottic area if it is cricoid cartilage this patient will have a symptoms like dyspnea sets of lump in the throat and also the dysphagia then in is 30 to 40 years are most affected here see you are seeing uh, a chondroma here retinoid whenever it is going into contraction it is seen like that once in the patient is having a deep inspiration it is going apart you can't see any problem this is the area chondroma there is the another condition called uh, a bloody growth uh, from uh, vessels it is called hemangioma so normally you see mostly infantile hemangioma which we have discussed even in the congenital uh, abnormalities they present with a strider at the early ages of the 6 months neonates in fact there 6 months here they will come but some hemangioma has evolved spontaneously but the adult fibroangioma adult angiomas will have a fibrous content also that's why we call it as a fibroangioma here we use carbon dioxide laser here this is the hemangioma this is another hemangioma it appears like a sheet watery like a polyp there is another condition called fibroma this fibroma is also a solid tumor sometimes it is a pedunculated also occurs at the edge of in the edge of the true vocal cord in the anterior one third of the true vocal cord sometimes it may be fibrous overgrowth or sometimes it is organized fibrosed submucosal hematoma sometimes may be inflammatory actually it is not a neoplasia the main symptom is the hoarseness you have to diagnose it by microlaryngoscopy same microreligial excision is performed to remove the fibromas prognosis is very good in these patients 
There is another condition called capillary ecthesia. See, because of the vibratory misuse or abuse of the voice, this micro trauma increases the vulnerability of the mucosal injury. And this mucosal injury leads to the hemorrhages, or sometimes these hemorrhages are solidified and organized. They develop into what you call capillary angiogenesis, which you will see here. So here you are seeing uh, actually the left vocal cord hemorrhage there. See, you are seeing one side, uh, there is a hemorrhage here, another side, there is a vas varicose. See, both sides you are seeing here. Varicose is the vocal cord. This is also the same. They are seen in the mostly in the females, particularly in the singers. They may lead to reduced vocal cord endurance. They lead to vocal cord hemorrhages. Sometimes this hemorrhage will form into a polyp. This is mostly where you are having the mini industry, where Bombay, particularly, we are having good friends, uh, those who do stroboscopy and the laryngeal surgery, mono surgery. This, uh, under examination, <coughs> you will find the abnormal dilatation of the lung arcade of capillaries proceeding to form from anterior to the posterior vocal parts. Here you are seeing the hemorrhage. Somebody is putting some hello, somebody there is some voice is coming. See music something wrong, please stop it. Management is by anticoagulants. Here we are using it. They have to stop. There is what you call acid reflux. Treatment has to be done there. Then they have to change the behavioral changes, has to be because speech therapy it has to be advised. Mm -hmm. Second treatment. We will do dilated capillaries if it's not coagulated. Uh, the management yeah. of capillaries leads to edema reduction here. Yeah. Carbon dioxide laser produces scarring here. That's why many people they use ATP laser, which is best, but you call it they are angiolytic and selectively ablate the vessels. You see, they see there is a small hemorrhage by speech therapy, it is totally cured, unilateral selling. And for larynx is next stop, malignant lesions. It is seen commonly in the males. 10 is to 1, that means that males and female. 3% is it Taji Kumar where we are getting sound? Who is producing? Hello? Somebody is putting the uh, songs there. Stop it. Are you cut off your Three percent of the total malignant tumors occur in the males uh, is the carcinoma larynx. 55 to 70 years of the ages are mostly affected here. The ideological factors are first the tobacco chewing, smoking, alcohol, and uh, radiation exposure, particularly because thyroid is in the next and they expose the radiation. It is also a pre-malignant condition. Keratosis, TV syndrome. That is another condition, you know, and herpes simplex, occupational hazards like asbestos, mustard gas, petroleum, 
products also can cause the carcinoma larynx. Next is the solitary papilloma, leukoplakia, and erythroplakia are also pre-manifigant GERD is a one condition has to be also keep in mind nowadays it is also a pre-malignant condition for the carcinoma larynx. This is one picture where you are seeing a proliferative cauliflower growth from the left vocal cord to the anterior commissure. Here the squamous cell carcinomas are more common. 90 to 95 percent adenocarcinomas, sarcomas are very, very rare. They range from well differentiated type to the anaplastic type, which is a dangerous one. The, you know, there is a, whenever malignancy comes, Schomer node and metastasis classification is also applied here. 70% of the laryngeal cancers occur in the glottic region and uh, other regions like verrucous carcinoma, spindle cell carcinoma, sarcoma or adenocarcinoma, they may occur in 5 to 10% of the total laryngeal dose. No problem. The division of the larynx, uh, you know, it is divided into sopraglottis, glottis, and subglottis. This uh, sopraglottis includes epiglottis, periepiglottic fold, erythinoids, and fox parts. Glottis, you know, the true vocal cord, where anterior commissure, post commissure, and the vocal cord. Subglottis, from below to the vocal cord up to over edge of the cricoid cartilage is called the subglottic area. The cancer sucker in the sopraglottic area, they are less frequent and they are seen either on the epiglottis, false vocal cord, area epiglottic folds, ventricles. And uh, it can extend to the valicula or base of the pyriform fossa. Is there, is there Ajay Kumar in the line? 91 number Ajay Kumar. Can you please stop the music? 91 Ajay Kumar. You can extend uh, this mass, may extend up to the valid line, base of tongue, pyriform fossa. The lymphatic spread uh, from the growth to the upper and middle jugular lymph nodes. The symptoms, uh, mostly the sopraglottic groups are silent. Sometimes they appear in the again Ajay Kumar. Please check your, you stop your uh, phone and you will see node in the neck and the hoarseness of the voice is a very late symptom in the soplagatic cancers and uh, painful difficulty in shallowing, weight loss is the symptoms occurs in the soplagatic cancers. Sopraglottic, when it extends to the other areas, it's called laryngopharyngeal malignancies. They extend anterior to the valicula, sometime into the pyriform fossa, sometime into the post cricat regions, and also the posterior pharyngeal. The etiology for this is similar to the glottic carcinoma. Etiology is in squamous cell carcinoma. Lymph nodes is a early, early seen in the sopraglottic because there is a lot of lymphatics here. You have to exclude the lymphomas occurring in the valicula and posterior one third of the tongue, particularly in the patients, young patients. 
the symptoms may appear like dysphagia pain foreign body sensation change of voice left stain scrotum lymph nodes and stridor see this patient will have a sign like what you call cauliflower growth or it may appear like a ulcers pooling of saliva may be there odd metastatic lymph nodes upper and middle may be involved and you will see as a sign a mass in the neck diagnosis is confirmed by biopsy and other investigations like ct and uh, mri and uh, normally these investigations what we do in the glottic will continue there the treatment here is in stage 1 and 2 we prefer the conservative laryngectomy surgery in our radio therapy in patient stage 3 and 4 laryngopharyngectomy and node dissection is ideal stage 3 and 4 cases of supraglottic glottic cancers are most common already you know 70 to 80% root of spread from anterior commission to it goes anteriorly posteriorly it goes from vocal process to erythroids posteriorly upward to the ventricle and false vocal cord downward to the subglottic region laterally you are having a cartilages and also the paraglottic space it may extend into that lymphatics is very rare because because the vocal cord is having no lymphatic once it goes to the side of the vocal cord then only the lymphatic spread will occur into the pre and paratracheal lymph nodes let's spread is very late because it is less blood fixation of vocal cord indicates when you examine the vocal cord it means that this is as progressed into the thyroerythroid muscle and this is a bad prognostic sign for the patient because the patient will have a early symptom hoarseness it is detected early the prognosis is very good in this glottic cancer this is a growth where you are seeing in the left vocal cord see while phonation it is like this and this patient is with a hoarseness of the voice these patients uh, as i told you first symptom hoarseness later dry cough they will feel a raw sensation in the larynx and throat sometimes the blood stained scrotum they will complain very very important is the stridor also they may go into stridor because of total occlusion of the glottic inlet lymph node metastasis i told you it is a late after Sometimes whitening of the larynx, that is what we call splaying of the thyroid cartilages, produces a widening. By seeing outside, you will see the widening of the larynx or the thyroid cartilage area. Because when it extends into the posteriorly, the patient will have a dysphagia. These are the sites of uh, vocal cord. Is the membranous cord first? As I told you, anterior comes to. and the posterior comes to usually from vocal cord edge this growth will start or upper surface of the vocal cord as i told you specific cancers you have seen in the picture cauliflower like growth sometimes they are ulcerative fixation of the vocal cords indicates the growth is more in the advanced stage laryngeal spaying which i told you and lymph nodes the neck also is a feature sometimes they come with a mass in the neck or the lymph node investigations first we have to do the direct laryngoscopy or microlaryngoscopy and take a biopsy and confirm by histopathological examination we do the routine blood and urine then we do the vtr and other tests for the syphilis to exclude it test x ray we will take we exclude the tuberculosis another one x ray of the neck lateral view will take out to 
see the patency of the airway of the patient, CT scan, which is more precise in nowadays, is also helpful. The treatment stage one and two of glottic cancers, where there is no card fixation, radiotherapy is the ideal because the patient will have a normal voice or some type of voice which is understandable, <coughs> what we call voice preservation. Partial laryngectomy is rarely done in stage 1 and 2. Stage 3 and 4, where there is a card fixation, total laryngectomy is the ideal one with the neck dissection. Total laryngectomy with the neck dissection. Whenever there is a, you have a facility of laser, and there is a small instance you can go for a removal of the cardectomies like that, and you, you can use a laser here. In advanced cases, we treat by analgesics, antibiotics, because the airway block is there, tracheostomy. Then you will do the right tube feeding. Later, we put the patient by chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Sublux glioma is similar to the glottic one, following the difference, low incidence subglottic carcinoma. Patient will have very late symptoms. Many times it is missed by indirect laryngoscopy. The treatment includes surgery, that means total laryngectomy and no dissection followed by radiotherapy. Now the mode of treatment is changing, surgery radiation and also chemotherapy. This is what we call cocktail treatment for the carcinoma. The prognosis is bad in case of subglottic. Subglottic cancers are rare. The root of spread is around the anterior wall to opposite side, downward to the trachea, upward to the vocal cords. As I told you, hoarseness is very late symptom. By that time, the metastasis will develop in pre-laryngeal, paratracheal, and also the lower jugular lymph nodes. They present mostly with strider. This is, is here we have to discuss just not about the post-fecal carcinoma. Because sometimes post-fecal carcinoma can extend anteriorly, sometimes the Laryngeal carcinoma go posteriorly, it appears like a post cricoid carcinoma. Post, only post cricoid carcinoma seen more in the females. As you all know, PV syndrome is the pre malignant condition here, and prognosis is very poor in case of post cricoid carcinoma. The early lymph node metastasis will occur in post cricoid carcinoma. These are all diagnosed. Glottic cancers are different. Supra, glottic or glottic or subglottic are diagnosed by history, indirect laryngoscopy, examine the neck, x ray of the neck, particularly lateral view. The evolving of the CT scan is more precise to plan the surgery, the extension of the growth by doing also MRI too. Direct laryngoscopy, micro laryngoscopy, these procedures also improve a lot. The diagnosis, at the end, we have to confirm with the taking biopsy there. You all know the TNM classification. T indicate tumor and its extent. What are the sites? One subsite, two subsite, three subsite, like that. We will put the T1, T2, T3. Node indicates the regional lymph nodes. What is the size of the node? Less than the three, we call it as a N1, N2 is a, the, that means three to six milli, six, above six centimeters, not millimeters, centimeters, then it is M3, N1, N2, N3. And uh, here we are seeing another one called metastase M. M0 means there is no distant metastasis. If there, if you put as a M, then it is indicate there is a distant metastasis. The involvement of the lymph node is not a metastasis because you are having N1 like that. Here you can describe that. Here, coming to the sopraglottic, how you will make a stage. And it is limited to one subside. 
that means uh, it is a uh, only epiglottis or only are epiglottic fold or only you are seeing or the retina we call it as a t1 and that there is a normal vocal cord mo mobility is there t2 indicates it is more uh, than the invading than the one subside it is going into the second subside T3 limited to the larynx with vocal cord fixation or in which post cricoid area or B epiglottic area, then we call it as a T3. T4 tumor extending through the thyroid cartilage, extend into the soft tissue of the neck, thyroid, and also use of agus, we call it as a T4 lesion. See, this is one type of a glottic carcinoma where you are seeing a calling anterior commission and also the more left vocal cord. Glottic is sta staged in the T1A, it is limited to one vocal cord. T1B involves both vocal cords. T2 means more than one subside. That means vocal cord, anterior commission or posterior commission. This T3 limited to the larynx with vocal cord fixation. T4 is the tumor extends through the thyroid cartilage, extends into the soft tissues of the neck, thyroid, and the use of actress. See, this is another case of the glottic cancer. Subglottic staging, T1 limited to the subglottis, T2 extend to the vocal cord, T3 means limited to the larynx with vocal cord fixation, T4 extends into the thyroid cartilage and other areas with vocal cord. T4 is The treatment modes are radiotherapy, surgery, chemotherapy, or combined therapy. Surgery is a conservative surgery where we do cardectomy, micro laryngeal, or via laryngofacia, splitting the vocal cord anteriorly. Also, you can do cardectomy. Partial frontolateral laryngectomy, these are all conservative procedures. Partial laryngectomy only, or a vertical hemilaryngectomy, <laughs> supraglottic laryngectomy, which is an horizontal partial, half of the horizontal the larynx is removed. Transoral robotic or laser surgeries are improving day by day. Total laryngectomy, where you remove the entire larynx, pre epiglottic space, strap muscles. Rings, a few rings are not recognized. Total laryngectomy, what are the indications? When the lesion is T3, all T4 lesions we will do total laryngectomy. Invasion of the thyroid or cricoid cartilages, then you have to resort for total laryngectomy. Bilateral erythroid involvement, again, you have to go for a total laryngectomy. Lesions in the posterior commissure, Already you are given radiotherapy, again there is a recurrent, then you have to go for a total. That is what you call failed radiotherapy. Whenever the, it is extending from glottic to the transglottic areas, we have to go for a total laryngectomy. Stage 1 and the stage 2, when you do total laryngectomy, the prognosis is very good. Stage 3 and stage 4, prognosis is good is bad because to convince the patient for stage one and stage two is very difficult. When you ask the patient, you will lose the voice means probably the patient may not agree. But prognosis is very good. Those who, where we are done in the two stage, these people are surviving years, 20, 25 years, they are doing good. The case which I have shown is done more than 15 years. This is what we do in total laryngectomy. We will remove the larynx here and uh, the larynx is totally removed. Later, how you will do the vocal rehabilitation after laryngectomy? Normally, the patients may develop uh, usophageal speech, which you have seen uh, a small video where you, the patient is having a usophageal speech and uh, there is another instrument called electronic artificial larynx. This electronic artificial larynx uh, is uh, 
uh, just like a cell phone, they can keep over there, over the laryngeal area. And if they speak, the vibrations are modulated and they, they, you can hear some communicable voice what the patient wants to say. There is another technique where you use this. Because once you perform the laryngectomy, the wall, posterior wall of the larynx and the anterior wall of the user wagon, they are together. Through this, you make a hole, what you call tracheoesophageal puncture. This tracheoesophageal puncture is made from the posterior wall of the trachea to the anterior wall of the eusophagus. So you have to make a small puncture. And through this puncture, you develop a small, you keep a prosthetic material walls in the, that opening. This is called a neoglottis formation, the valve which first identified by Blom Singer process. This is a, this process is a little past year because you have to replace the process for every six months. And that is very difficult because it is more than 20 to 30,000. For patients, it's very difficult. But there is one Indian process has developed from the Manipal Hospital that is very cheap, they give for four to five thousand. You can keep that process in the hole, that is what you call trachea use of the puncture hole, you can keep inside. And next is the, here the main problem is whenever you make a hole in the trachea, this will give a problem, leak of the content when the patient swallows the fluid will come in through the trachea, into the lungs. Patient may develop aspiration pneumonia or continuously they will have a irritation. They will give a, what you call, they get a cough. It is a dangerous, what you call, trachea use of a fistula. A trachea use of a is nothing but you are making a fistula in the posterior wall. And uh, you, in that fistula, you are keeping the processes here. This is one patient where we are seen. Now this fellow is having a permanent tracheostomy here. There is no larynx here. The total laryngectomy was done. See, this is what you call electrolarynx. Here, I told you just like a torch light or small apparatus will be there. Where you will keep this uh, again is your uh, uh, area of the vibration and this usophageal vibrations, air contents uh, in the oral cavity will vibrate through this and uh, some communicable voice uh, where you can understand what the patient wants to communicate. This is uh, a puncture, see from the esophagus into the trachea, a puncture is made. And after making this puncture, you will introduce the process. This is Brom Singer process. And once you introduce this process, this will have a small artificial, what you call uh, vocal cords, like vibrators will be there. These vibrators, uh, they will give some communicable voice uh, where uh, we can understand uh, speech of this uh, patient. Nowadays, after uh, invention of the, these video endoscopes and video laryngoscopes, the uh, early detection of the uh, carcinoma larynx or any benign lobe relations have come and most of the people are becoming educated. And this leads to early they attend to the doctor and the patient will have a, a early cure and uh, the carcinomas are becoming so less. And also, the, because the smoking, particularly the smoking, is probably going a little down, the carcinoma is also coming down, probably. This is one surgeon famous in the Germany for the head and neck, for which he has done a lot of work over the larynx. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. 